If you're looking to break into the cloud industry or level up your skills with a cloud certification, then you are in the right place. Today, we're diving into evidence-based strategies to effectively study for cloud certifications. Whether you're preparing for AWS, Azure, or Google Cloud, these tips will help you maximize your learning, retain information better, and ace your exams. In fact, I use these exact strategies to pass my associate and professional level AWS certifications so you know that these strategies will work. Now, throughout my childhood, I struggled with traditional learning methods. I was never great at absorbing information from books or theoretical classes. Instead, I found that I learned best by doing by being practical and by putting things into practice. Now, I actually got this video idea from world famous productivity and YouTube expert Ali Abdel and combined what he said with my own successful hacks to passing cloud certifications. So this is going to be game changing for you to apply to your own upcoming cloud exams. Before we get started, you should check out my weekly cloud newsletter where I share free resources, tutorials, boot camps, and so much more helping you make your cloud move. Let's start with the three steps to effective studying. Step one is understanding the materials. When you're studying for cloud certifications, it's important to move beyond the simple memorization and focus on truly understanding the concepts. In the cloud world, cloud services don't work in isolation. They work together to create solutions. To understand these concepts effectively, start with the fundamentals and ensure you have a solid understanding of core cloud concepts like virtualization, networking, storage, databases, and security. These form the foundation upon which all cloud services are built on. You want to explore the cloud services by category. AWS, for example, has over 200 services, which can be overwhelming. Break them down into categories like compute, EC2 and Lambda, storage such as S3 and EBS, databases such as RDS and DynoDB, and networking such as VPC and Route 53 to make the learning of services more manageable. You can apply the same principles to Azure and GCP. Now, each cloud service is designed to solve a specific problem. Understanding when and why to use a particular service is just as important as knowing how it works. For example, knowing DynamoDB is ideal for storing large amounts of unstructured data, whilst Amazon RDS is better suited for structured and relational data, or S3 for static content and any type of media files. Step two from the effective three steps is actively recalling the information. Active recall is a process of actively retrieving information from your memory, rather than passively reviewing notes or watching videos. To effectively engage in active recall, you need to regularly test your knowledge using practice questions. AWS offers official practice exams, but you can also find community created quizzes on platforms like Udemy and Cloud Guru. Don't just focus on getting the right answer. Understand the reasoning behind each question. Now you should also engage with the cloud services directly through hands-on labs and AWS, Azure and GCP offer free tier accounts and you can actually get started by configuring services so you understand their features and limitations much better. Another great way to actively recall information is by teaching others, which is one of the best ways to reinforce your own understanding. Join online communities, participate in study groups, or write blog posts explaining AWS concepts in your own words. Now, if you can clearly explain a service to someone else, it's very likely that you're close to mastery. Step three is to apply your knowledge. Applying your knowledge through real world projects is the ultimate test of your understanding. It allows you to see how cloud services work together in practice and reinforces your learning. To effectively apply your knowledge, you wanna start small. Begin with a simple project that uses just a few AWS services. For example, creating a static website using Amazon S3 or Amazon CloudFront, or set up a serverless API using Amazon Lambda or API Gateway. As you become more comfortable with the cloud platform, take on more complex projects that involve multiple services and architectures. For instance, build a web application that uses Amazon EC2 for compute, RDS for databases, and elastic load balancing for high availability. Now, another great way to apply your knowledge is to look for case studies or architectures that align with your interests or professional goals. 
try to replicate these using AWS services and adapting them as needed. This will give you practical experience with common cloud patterns and best practices. My final tip of this part is to document your work. As you build projects, document your process, including any challenges that you faced and how you overcame them. This not only reinforces your learning, but also creates a valuable resource to share with others in the community. Okay, so my next tip is to learn and understand anything using the Feynman technique. The Feynman technique is a powerful learning method that helps you deeply understand complex concepts by explaining them in simple terms. It's named after Richard Feynman, a re-owned physicist known for his ability to break down complicated ideas into easy to understand explanations. This technique is particularly useful when studying for cloud certifications, as it helps you move beyond the mere memorization and develop a true grasp of services and their interactions. And here's how you can apply the Feynman technique to your cloud certifications. Step one, choose a concept and start by selecting an AWS service or concept that you want to learn, such as Amazon EC2 instances or Amazon S3 buckets. It's essential to focus on one idea at a time to avoid overwhelming yourself. Step two is to explain it simply. Imagine you're teaching the concept to a friend or colleague who has no technical background. Explain the service or concept in plain, simple language without using any technical jargon. Now this forces you to distill the idea down to its core components and understand it at a fundamental level. For example, if you're explaining Amazon EC2 instances, you might say something like this. Amazon EC2 is like renting a computer in the cloud. Instead of buying and maintaining your own physical server, you can use EC2 to quickly create virtual machines with the operating system and resources that you need. It's like having a powerful computer at your fingertips without the need and hassle of managing the hardware. Step three is to identify your knowledge gaps. As you explain a concept, pay attention to the areas where you struggle or the explanation feels a little bit incomplete. These are the gaps in your understanding that you need to address. Make a note of these gaps and refer back to the AWS documentation, training materials, or online resources to fill in the missing pieces. Step four is to simplify. Once you've identified and filled in your knowledge gaps, try to simplify your explanation even further. Use analogies or real world examples to make the concept more relatable and easier to grasp. For instance, when explaining Amazon S3, you could use an analogy such as Amazon S3 is like a giant filing cabinet in the cloud. Just like you store files in folders in a filing cabinet, you can store data objects in buckets in S3. And just like a filing cabinet has unique label for each drawer and folder, S3 uses unique keys to identify and retrieve your data objects. Step five is to practice and refine. Repeat the process of explaining the concept, identifying gaps, and simplifying your explanation. The more you practice, the more deeply that you'll understand the service or the concept. Now, you can also try explaining the idea to different audiences, such as someone who's an AWS learner or someone that's actually technical work in AWS, or even a rubber duck, which is a common practice in programming known as rubber duck debugging. Now, remember, the Feynman technique is not about perfecting your explanations on the first try. It's an iterative process that helps you gradually deepen your understanding and identifying areas for improvement. By consistently applying this technique to your cloud studies, you'll develop a robust, practical understanding of cloud concepts that will serve you well in your certification exams and beyond. We briefly spoke about Active Recall in the three steps to effective studying, but let's dig in a little bit deeper to clearly create a better understanding of this concept. Active Recall is a learning strategy that involves actively retrieving information from your memory rather than passively reading or watching. When you engage in Active Recall, you force your brain to search for and retrieve the information that you've learned which strengthens the neural connections associated with that knowledge. Now, this makes it easier to recall the information later when you need it, such as during an exam or on the job. Now, research has consistently shown that active recall is more effective than passive review techniques like rereading notes or rewatching videos. This is because active recall requires mental effort, which helps to consolidate and deepen your understanding of the material. Now, by contrast, passive review often creates a false sense of familiarity with the content, leading you to believe you know it better than you actually do. So how can you incorporate Active Recall in your cloud certification studies? Here are some practical techniques. 
Firstly, you wanna quiz yourself often. As you read through documentation or watch training videos, pause periodically and ask yourself questions about the materials. Try to recall key concepts, definitions, and how different services work together. You can do this mentally or by writing out your answers. The act of forcing yourself to remember and articulate the information will strengthen your memory and your understanding. Next, you wanna summarize it in your own words. After learning about a new concept or service, take a moment to summarize the key points in your own words. This helps you process the information more deeply and ensures that you've grasped the main ideas. Focus on how the service fits into the broader cloud ecosystem and how it relates to other services that you've learned about. Next, you wanna create your own flashcards and practice questions. While there are many pre-made flashcards and practice questions available, creating your own is a more effective way to engage in active recall. Because as you create more questions and answers, you'll need to think critically about the material and identify the most important points. Now, this process alone will help solidify your understanding. Plus, you can tailor the questions to your own learning needs and your own learning style. The key to effective active recall is consistency. Make it a regular part of your study routine and you'll find that your understanding and retention of cloud concepts will improve dramatically. Now, one powerful combination is to use the Feynman technique in conjunction with active recall. Because as you work to explain cloud concepts in simple terms, you wanna quiz yourself on your explanations and refine them based on your ability to actively recall the information accurately. Now, this dual approach will help you identify gaps in your understanding and strengthen your memory in the material. Now, if you want to get started with the cloud and build real world cloud skills through hands on project based learning, then you should check out my Cloud Engineer Academy, where I provide you with a structured way of learning and guiding you to go from zero to cloud engineer hero, covering the fundamentals, the tools and technologies to learn and become a cloud engineer through self paced videos, live workshops and portfolio based projects. Now, recently, one of our students secured a new role paying over $250,000 in total compensation. This role is completely remote too, which shows that it's possible if you have the right roadmap, the guidance and plan to break into the cloud world. And it doesn't matter if you are a beginner. I've taught students who knew nothing about cloud engineering to learn the skill set and get hired within their first three months. Now, inside the Cloud Engineer Academy, you won't just get access to the course content. You will have access to live workshops, a private Discord community of cloud enthusiasts, interview preparation, and my own personal CV template that helped me secure multiple six-figure jobs. And of course, so much more. To find out more, go check out www.cloudengineeracademy.io and see some of the reviews of our current students. So once you've gone through the course content, done your active recall, played around with the cloud console, it's time for practice papers. Practice papers are a critical component to preparing for any cloud certification. They serve as a valuable tool for assessing your readiness and identifying areas for improvement and familiarizing yourself with the format and style of the actual certification exam. So let's explore the importance of practice exams and how to effectively use them in your own study routine. Practice exams help you determine whether you're ready to take the actual certification exam. By simulating the exam experience, you can assess your knowledge and identify areas where you need to focus more on study time. Now, when you take a practice exam, you'll quickly discover which topics or services that you're less comfortable with. This allows you to target your studies and fill in those knowledge gaps before the real exam. Cloud certification exams often have specific question formats, such as multiple choices or multiple responses. You can also select your exam in multiple languages. I ended up taking my exams in Korean. Practice exams help you become familiar with these formats, so you know what to expect on exam day. Practice exams help you develop effective test-taking strategies such as time management, process of elimination, and identifying key phrases in questions. These strategies can boost your confidence and performance on the actual exam. Now, did you know that most practice exams for cloud certifications are actually more difficult than the actual exam itself? So if you get around 60% score of your practice exams, I suggest that you book your cloud certification exam because that means that you're ready to take it. Now, I strongly believe that you will never build a real understanding of the cloud unless you build hands-on projects. This is a cheat code to mastering the cloud platforms and passing your cloud certifications with flying colors. Cloud projects allow you to apply the theoretical knowledge that you've gained through studying and practice exams to real world scenarios, helping you develop practical skills that are highly valued in the workplace. 
When you build a project using cloud services, you gain a deeper understanding of how those services work and how to interact with each other. You'll encounter challenges and learn how to troubleshoot issues, which will strengthen your knowledge and problem solving skills. Now, projects will give you the opportunity to take the concepts that you've learned and apply them to realistic situations. This helps you move beyond the simple memorization and develop practical understanding of how cloud services can be used to solve real world problems. Hands-on projects help you develop practical skills that are essential for success in your cloud computing career. You'll learn how to design architectures, implement solutions, and manage cloud resources. These skills are highly sought after by employers. As you complete projects, you also should create a portfolio that demonstrates your work and cloud computing skills and experience. This is a valuable asset when applying for jobs or seeking promotions, as it provides a tangible evidence of your abilities. So how do you build a cloud project? Firstly, you wanna plan before you build. Before you dive into a project, take time out to plan out your architecture and identify which services that you need to use. This will help you stay organized and ensure that you're using the most appropriate services for the task at hand. Next, you wanna break the projects down into smaller tasks. Large projects can be overwhelming, so you wanna break them down into smaller and manageable tasks. This will help you stay focused and make steady progress while also providing opportunities to test and debug your work along the way. And don't forget to document your work. As you build your project, document your progress, challenges, and solutions. This will reinforce your learning and create a valuable reference for future projects. It can also be useful for showcasing your work to potential employers or colleagues. Now, the techniques that I've shared with you today, like the Feynman technique, active recall, and hands-on projects have been game-changing for me. It's allowed me to pick up cloud certifications with ease. They've allowed me to master the complex topics, retain information better, and apply my knowledge in real world scenarios. Now, I want to encourage you to embrace these techniques in your own learning journey. Don't be afraid to try new things, to fail, and to learn from your mistakes. Stay curious, stay passionate, and keep pushing yourself to be the best version of yourself. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.